running up to the pulpit <laughs> or speak up or something. But um, so we do broadcast the message on live on Facebook, Facebook Live, and it is recorded and is later available. The video is later later available on our website and on our YouTube channel and Facebook and on Facebook. Yes. So will you pray with me, please? You who loved us into being. Bless our speaking and our hearing. May this time be one of loving understanding, of healing, and of grace. Teach us to listen with love to one another, not only here, but to everyone. In all your names, amen. amen. Well, what a time to be talking about love. It almost seems counterintuitive to be bringing up love at a time like this, um, when our news shows are filled with videos of hate-filled groups like the Proud Boys uh, attacking people on the streets of New York and Charlottesville. I don't know if anybody saw what happened um, Friday night um, uh, in, in New York, but uh, when others full of fear accuse individuals of a different race or ethnicity of crimes they didn't commit simply because they were afraid. We've had several examples of that. Uh, homes are vandalized with racist, ethnic, and homophobic slurs. Children are bullied in social media to the point where they take their own lives. Is this a time to be talking about love? It is the very time to be talking about love, my friend. It is the time when we need to be talking about it the most. Do we talk about food when we're full? Do we, or water, when we're in a bathtub or at a lake? No, we talk about what we crave when we lack it. Food, sunlight, freedom. My pen pal on the inside in prison loves to go camping. He loves the out of doors. You can imagine how difficult prison is for him. <clears throat> he seizes every opportunity that he has for yard time, as they call it. And I asked him if he wanted to hear my camping stories, because I used to camp a lot when I was much younger, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> um, or if that would be too painful, too difficult for him to, to remember when he couldn't do that. And, and But he said he would love to hear them, because that it would, it would bring, bring back his own memories, and it would, it would bring back that, those thoughts. And he wanted to hear them. So we talk a lot about the camping that I did, and I tell him stories of my camping days and the funny stories that I can remember, and, and, uh, and then the places that I went and what we did. And he loves, he loves to hear those stories. We talk about uh, those, that, that camping, his camping memories, too. We talk about what we miss, about what we need. When we are lonely, we talk about our friends, past and present. We call them if they're far away. We look at pictures of people we love who are no longer with us. We talk about them with others who knew them. We crave what we lack, right? Right now, in this world, we are craving love. Not only human love, the love of partners, many of us share that, but love for one another as human beings, that agape love, love of humanity, the other. We crave the love that can see another person and reach out in compassion and sympathy and care. Forty years ago, a mysterious disease began showing up, first in New York and San Francisco, and then in Los Angeles and Chicago and Miami and Toronto and 
other big cities, chiefly among gay men and intravenous drug users. No one knew exactly how it was spread. And homophobia fed the fires of fear and hatred. The disease was first called GRID, Gay-Related Immune Deficiency, and then AIDS, and then HIV, and then HIV-AIDS. It's difficult for people under the age of about 45 to really understand how things were then. People, even medical personnel, were terrified. I remember when I had my son in 1989, um, I had to have a C-section. They put a red bracelet on me, medical bracelet, red medical bracelet, because I had had blood transfusions in the late 1960s and early 70s, which was a time they had backtracked and discovered that the AIDS virus had first appeared in the US around that time, but they didn't know about it, of course. And the, um, it was before testing was done. So they didn't know if I might have the virus. The red bracelet was to warn my health care providers to use protective gear, gloves, masks, etc., when handling my bodily fluids. Universal precautions was not yet a thing. And I was a white, straight appearing, <clears throat> middle class, cis woman in the hospital having a baby. If that was how they treated me, Imagine how things were for some other folks. AIDS patients were sequestered, literally sequestered, locked away in wards without enough care or left at home. Frequently their partners were already deceased. We needed love. MCC stepped in. Food banks, care buddy networks, and visiting schedules were set up. Deacons were trained to provide pastoral care to help the overwhelmed pastors, many of whom themselves, the male pastors, became ill. Our community is often accused of being split and splintered and warring on itself, and it's true. These, those letters often turn on each other, LGBTQ. But in the depths of the horror, I am proud to say the women stood up and cared for their mothers. Amen. I can say it because I wasn't out yet, I wasn't there, I'm not blowing my own horn. It was MCC who stood up and provided spiritual care when no other clergy would go into the AIDS <clears throat> wards on visits or preside at funerals. And I wish some of the churches that are so proud of their affirming stances on ordination and same gender marriage today would remember that. They were not there then. And it was lesbian and bi women who visited and fed and cared for their brothers who needed them, who needed love. Love, not sentiment, not the gooey, everything will be okay, sur surface feeling, but love, those strong, tough, stay with it, powerful emotion that endures all things, that knows things are sometimes just crap. And I do not apologize for using that word. There's illness, there's sometimes deception, sometimes pain, and prison, and loneliness, and hurt, and addiction, and sorrow, and hunger. But love knows, too, there's more than all that. That there's hope, and peace, and finally endless love, and the dawn of a day that does not end. There's love. 
Love draws those bones back together, puts flesh and skin on them, brings them to life. Not perhaps in this world, before our eyes, but to the inner eye of love in the world of possibility. Because love makes all things possible. Sometimes life indeed simply sucks. We've all been there in our personal lives, in what we see in the world around us. Medical issues, death, injustice in the world, natural disasters, personal disappointments, all sorts of reasons for life not being what we hoped and wanted it to be. But when we look at it with the eyes of love, when we look for the love, when we try to be to be the love. That is when things change. That is when those dry bones can put on flesh and come to life again. It's easy to deplore injustice. <laughs> uh, I do it every day. Anyone who reads on my Facebook feed knows that. <clears throat> and you hear it from me every week, I think. But when I'm in the food pantry, sharing food with the folks who come in for some help and hear their stories and offer some loving help, I see the change. Not only do they receive food, but they've been heard. And they shared some laughter. When I write back and forth with my pen pal, he's not a project, he's my friend. There's love there too. He's boosted my spirits when I fell down, and vice versa. I hope, anyway. <laughs> I tried. There's been some flesh put on my dry bones. Working to prevent more natural disasters or to be better prepared for the next one. Listening to friends and family dealing with disappointment. That's love. Being heard. Being helped. That's love. And that's how we create love, my friends. We share our hopes and dreams and fears and pains. Even when they fall apart and don't come true and when they come brilliantly to life as well. Creating love, sharing love, that deep heart love, that is how we change the world. 40 years ago, MCC shared that love. We continue to share that love, now and into the future. In all God's name, Amen. Amen.